Hey guys, Jed here. Welcome to another video. In today's lesson, we're going to be solving quadratic inequalities. In order to solve quadratic inequalities, you need to know how to solve quadratic equations, graph quadratics, represent solutions of inequalities on a number line. If you need to do any one of those, I've included a link for each lesson in the description below. So go ahead and check them out. Okay, for this problem, we have to solve the following inequality, shade in the regions that satisfy this inequality, and finally represent the solutions on a number line. So you can solve quadratic inequalities without actually needing a graph. And this is how I do it. I first make this quadratic inequality a quadratic equation. So we can factorize this expression to get the following. And now we can equal each bracket to zero. Rearranging for x gives us the following roots x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 2. Now we can take these roots and solve the quadratic inequality as follows. If your expression is on the left-hand side of the inequality and your quadratic expression is a positive one, so in this case our x squared is positive, therefore the quadratic expression is positive, and your zero is on the right-hand side of the inequality, then the following rule applies. Having a greater than or a greater than or equals to symbol in your inequality means your solutions are on the outside. And what that means is this. Your solutions are going to look like this. X is going to be less than your smallest root. So in this case, out of our two roots, two is the smallest one. And X is going to be greater than your largest root, which in our case is three. So we can say the solutions of this inequality are X is less than two and X is greater than three. And of course, if this was a greater than or equals to symbol, our solutions will have equals to components in their inequality symbols. And of course, if your quadratic inequality had a less than or a less than or equal to symbol, this means that your solutions are on the inside and the following applies. Your smallest root is going to be less than X, which is going to be less than your largest root. This essentially means that your solutions lie in between the smallest root and the largest root. And of course, if your original inequality had a less than or equals to sign, then your solutions will have equals to components as well. But in our case, our inequality was greater than zero, which means we have this type of solution here. Now let's take our solutions and shade in the regions that satisfy this inequality. As you can see, we have two vertical lines, one at x equals 2 and one at x equals 3. And these are obtained from our solutions to the inequality, where we have x is less than 2, so therefore there's going to be a line at x equals 2, and x is greater than 3, therefore there's going to be a line at x equals 3. And the lines are dashed because our solution has inequality symbols without the equals component. If it had the equals component, then the lines would be solid. And we'll see this in our next example. But for now, let's shade in the regions that satisfy this inequality. We're going to have two regions. So if we go to our line x equals 2 and read our solution, which is x is less than this 2, then it's going to be to the left of the line. So we shade in this region like so. And now for the other part of the solution, x is greater than 3, we go to the line x equals 3. And we can see that this is to the right of the line x equals 3. And this is the region that satisfies the inequality as well. So there are two regions here. And this is what I mean when I say that the solutions are on the outside, because this is what they look like. Now let's go ahead and represent these solutions on a number line. Here we have a number line and the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the number line. From what we learned when it came to solving linear inequalities, our solutions tell us the following. Where x is less than 2, we go to 2 in the number line and we draw a hollow circle. It is hollow because the less than symbol does not have an equals component. If it had an equals to component, then we'd color in the circle. But in this case it doesn't, so we'll leave it empty like this. And if your x is on the left-hand side of the inequality and your value is on the right-hand side, you can use this inequality symbol as a sort of indicator of which way your arrow is going to go. 
So in our case, it heads towards the left, and that looks like this. And now we'll do the same for where x is greater than 3, so it's going to be an empty circle above 3, and an arrow heading to the right like this. And there you have it, that's how you represent the solutions on a number line. Now for our second example, we're going to solve this inequality, but in order to do this, we need to get all of our terms onto the left hand side, leaving 0 on the right hand side. So let's begin eliminating this 5x minus 2. I'm going to first begin by subtracting 5x from both sides, and this gives us 2x squared minus 5x is less than or equal to negative 2. I'm now going to add 2 to both sides, and this is going to leave us with 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Now we take this quadratic inequality and make it a quadratic equation, and we can go ahead and solve that. If you can factorize it, go ahead and factorize. If it can't be factorized, don't restrict yourself from using the quadratic formula or completing the square. Your primary job here should be to get the root of this equation. In our case, we can factorize this, and it gives us the following. We can go ahead and equal each bracket to 0 and solve for x now. Here we get x is equal to a half, and here we get x is equal to 2. So these are our two roots for this quadratic equation. Now we can use these two roots to find the solutions to this quadratic inequality. Now remember the keys on the right hand side. If your inequality has a greater than or a greater than or equals to symbol, your solutions are on the outside. And if your inequality has a less than or a less than or equal to symbol, which in our case it does, your solutions are going to be on the inside. So our smallest root is going to be a half, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. And that is how you would write the solution for this quadratic inequality. Now let's go ahead and graph this inequality and shade in the regions that satisfy this inequality using our solutions. Graphing the inequality looks like this. Here we have vertical straight lines at x equals a half and x equals 2. And these numbers come from our solution to the inequality. Notice also that the lines are solid, and this is because we have an equals component in our inequality symbols. Now we're interested in shading the region that satisfies this inequality, and this region is between a half and 2. So between a half and 2 which is this middle region here. This is the region that satisfies my inequality. Now let's go ahead and represent our solutions on a number line. So on this number line, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Using our solutions, we're going to put a circle above a half and above 2. Now don't forget that this circle is going to be a colored in circle because our inequality symbols have an equals component to them. So a half is going to be between 0 and 1, so I'm just going to put it here, a colored in circle, and above 2, a colored in circle. And from our lesson on solving linear inequalities, when you have this type of solution, you just draw a line in between your two circles that looks like this. And there you have it, guys. This is how you solve quadratic inequalities, shade the regions that satisfy them, and represent the solutions on a number line. I really hope you've learned something from this lesson, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe and like to support the channel. Thank you again for watching and take care.